1995, the Oklahoma City bombing shatters a building in a nation. In Europe, peace is celebrated in Bosnia. 1995 was also the year for retro fashion of the 60s and 70s, as the Mod Squad returned alongside the disco dress. It was also hip to be square, with conservative clothes like twin sets and fitted suits. Here's a look at the best of 1995 from the runways of the world. The City of Light, Paris, reflects an unrivaled level of taste and style. See what's turning the light on French style this season. And this is how John Galliano did it. Converting a photo studio into his own private set, Galliano set his divas among vintage autos to create a classically beautiful scene. The inspiration was Japanism, which was an artistic cultural movement in 1910 and the fusion with 1950s divas. Although some people see some nostalgia about it, I don't at all. I think it's the only way to express today and the future with some ideas of the past. I wanted to show her in her different guises. Um, in each guise, she is a diva. Each one we cut on the girls. Um, there was some bias cutting. There was a lot of um, working with traditional techniques, um, which I really enjoyed doing. And the placements of their design and their colors, the Edwardian areas, those wonderful dusty pinks and beiges. And then ending with a very 50s, almost faded technicolor. Glamour, enormous sense of humor, a lot of distance, not so much to wear for the office. It opens your eyes to fantasies. It's a dream. 27 sensational pieces. From John Galliano. Now here are the trends that show a body best this season. As designers emphasize the silhouette, shape is on display. After a period of shapelessness, the return of the womanly silhouette is an obvious backlash of the mostly unfeminine, unflattering grunge movement. Here's how you can get in shape. It's a bust. I mean, it gives you a completely different, even if you wear a sweater under, it doesn't give you the same silhouette. It changes completely the silhouette to have a, a push-up bra. <laughs> I think a very fitted 50s kind of looking suit um, with a shapely hourglass jacket and a pencil skirt. Never has being a woman looked so good. Designer Chantal Thomas always shows off her best form. Glimpse her latest eye-popping glamour. Silhouette is very sexy, as usual. Oh, it's a glamour, feminine, uh, sophisticated lady, but um, who decide themselves to um, to be feminine. There is some new fabric, very interesting to work, lingerie, that uh, you can really make beautiful things, who look tiny and sexy, 
and but in the same time it's it's still comfortable because we want to be beautiful but we want to be comfortable in the same time and uh, all those new fabric the lycra mixed with uh, many things gives you both together so it's interesting to work that when I was very young because I was uh, I was dressing myself I mean I was designing my clothes for myself in the 70s because nothing exists I mean at that period the fashion was very boring for a young girl so I was design designing my, my, my clothes and my mother tried to help me and it was very funny clothes so when people look at me and say oh you should sell that it's beautiful so I started like that I like when all the silhouette is soft, I mean with soft fabric like satin, kind of glamour look. Very pin-up, you know, like uh, I love the Vargas pin-up. I, I try to make clothes who gives the idea of a perfect body <laughs> to everybody. I think it's more interesting to do something fantastic for the show, but in the same time, he, he, can be wearable in the street, maybe not exactly like I saw on the runway, but even wearable. I had silk, satin, very soft fabric, fabric very nice to wear. I mean, is it agri uh, nice on the body? No one shapes modern bodies better than Chantal Thomas. To celebrate his 20th anniversary, Thierry Mouglet created a spectacle. At the Cirque d'Hiver in Paris, Mouglet presented what promised to be the greatest show on earth. He is one of the most wonderful designers because he not only designs fabric but he designs obviously people's lives it, it goes much broader than just a piece of fabric <laughs> he would say to me you know you but the way he would interpret me you know you but more you plus he wanted to, me to be the countess and uh, so he said you are countess Lindorf which I am and so I said, okay, we do it very cool. And he, we, we decided together that I'm doing nothing. I'm just walking there. Most of the time it has to be sexy and glamorous. And sometimes he feel like, just feel wild, like the animal. Well, the corset went from, it doesn't breathe. It's not made of elastic. And do you remember the women at the end of the last century when they had the vapors? When they were wearing Cherry Mugler's corsets. <laughs> They're so unique. I mean, they're almost avant-garde. They're so so wonderful, and they're they're very feminine. Everything is so feminine. I like that. His clothes are just so thrilling. Even the fantasy clothes are are unique and marvelous. I love Terry Mugler's um, brain. To be able to to you know uh, design these magnificent things. Yeah, to be a character like a very rich woman who's. Very rich, but she doesn't care that she's rich, and she's a bitch, and she just walks around, and she's beautiful, and she doesn't care, and you know, like she's she's big, she's here, she's got it all, and you know, that's that's the time. You can do everything because so difficult to walk and everything with this club, but it's funny, so funny, and it's a great show. And now for the show. This extravaganza surpassed expectations. I want to show with beauty. I want to show the beauty through the age. I want to show the courage. It's not that easy to be a woman, so I want to show it. A pantheon of more than 55 supermodels starred, 
along with dozens of other celebrities and performers. And while the cost was rumored to be over $3 million, over 17,000 people viewed this spectacle. A shapely homage to women from Thierry Mugler. The latest in French style from Video Fashion. There's an air about Milan. The fast life. The glitz and glamour. high fashion, and star power. Catch the breeze of the Milanese. And the Alberta Ferretti showroom is going to be a busy place this season. This outstanding Ferretti collection was all about prettiness. As usual, this is a collection which is dedicated to women. Ferretti collections are always about and for women. Some new looks in the collection include length, body skimming silhouettes, which come to the top of the knee, and also an angle length, which I find very elegant. Fabrics are very important, especially when you are dealing with simple silhouettes. Therefore, I spend a lot of time choosing my fabrics. I choose shiny and translucent fabrics, such as satins, duchesse, and paillettes. Also, lots of chiffon because it's so feminine. Ferretti's fabrics and silhouettes play up feminine assets. The colors for me were the classics, blue, white, and black, which I love. And this year I introduced pastels, but diluted, smoky, and very soft pastels.
The silhouettes this season are very body-hugging. They skim the body without hugging it too tightly and making it vulgar. This leaves a little magic in it. It suggests without being obvious. The feminine magic of Alberta Ferretti. The Jenny Collection by Donatella Girambelli and American designer Rebecca Moses leans towards natural tendencies this season. The message this season is to the new woman who has rediscovered her femininity. She has done this by finding a new romanticism and by letting her vulnerability and femininity shine through in the expression of her clothing. And Jenny expresses it beautifully. The fabrics this season are very delicate and very light, like organza and georgette. But this year they have a new patina to them, a shine that expresses a new modern femininity. This is also expressed in the colors and the silhouettes, but especially in the use of fabrics. And these clean, unfussy clothes shine in the sunniest of colors. Hyacinth blue. Peony pink and buttercup yellow. The silhouette is close to the body without revealing too much. It enhances feminine lines. This length is either very short or very long. There are less pants this season and the shoulders are very small. The skirts are either very tight to the body or flare. All these full skirts are shaped like the delicate petals of a flower. It is a theme throughout the collection. Flowers and lights. And women. <laughs> Playing up womanly assets naturally. Donatella Girambelli for Jenny. And this season, the Italian leaders look back to a glorious cutting edge time in fashion. I was surprised to see the number of 60s clothes again. It's like the Mod Squad. Um, well, that was more 70s, really. It's more Courage. Uh, go-go boots, uh, plastic, uh, minis again. In typical 90s fashion, the Milanese are looking back as they head into the future. But this season, the emphasis goes from mod to modern. With kicky color combinations and a streamlined silhouette, the Italian runways are a spark with the brightest fashions this side of Carnaby Street. And the new erogenous zone seems to be the calf as Italy goes gaga over the go-go boot. It's a mod, 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 mod world in Milan this season. <laughs> Sexy is the word to describe the fall Gucci collection. A slinky silhouette leads the look. It's an ultra-modern, super-chic collection that makes the subtlest allusions to fashion's past. <laughs> The inspiration, you know, 
Last season we had a lot of retro looks and everyone was looking back and I think it's really time people started looking to now and to the future for, for fashion. I mean, you know, we, we have to be optimistic about the age that we live in now. So that was really the starting point. It was a much sexier collection, I think really sexy, less restraint, less uptight. I think people want to, you know, be more relaxed. Uh, women are more confident. Uh, you know, I don't think you need to put on a 50s suit and a corset to feel good about yourself. I don't think it's modern. And I think that a sexier, more relaxed look is really right. There were a wide range of fabrics. Um, you know, we're famous for, for luxury fabrics, cashmere, merino, merino blends, and all those were there. But we did a lot of research on fabrics this season. A lot of things were metallicized, plasticized, mohair was important, finish is important. Um, you know, color was very important, and, and certain fabrics take color better. So shine was very important. Uh, there was a lot of uh, work done on the fabrics this season. The best thing in the, the accessories, I think, is really the material that both the boots and the bags were made of, which is this metallicized, plasticized patent leather that we developed, which I think really looks great. So uh, the boot, in terms of silhouette, is really the new shoe of the season. The heel is important, you know, talking about a sexy look. It's easier to feel sexy and confident on a heel. It's not a very spindly heel. It's not a stiletto heel. It's not a delicate shoe. It's a very solid, straight, slightly aggressive heel that really gives the pitch of your body you know, a very confident stance. There were also some beautiful deep colored accessories in the metallic car finish blue, burgundy. But, you know, again, going back to talking about uh, Technicolor, talking about the age that we live in, talking about, you know, an accessory should be fun. I mean, it's something that you don't have to wear head to toe. So you may need, you know, a black suit or a navy blue suit or something that's real, something that's wearable. But an accessory, you know, you can put down, you can change, and really this should be fun. So the colors, uh, you know, I, I love the metallic red was my favorite, my favorite colored accessory. Just because something's classic doesn't mean it can't be fun. Um, obviously, it was less classic than what we've done in the past. But I think, you know, we've been moving gradually towards a different image, and we've been developing a different customer, and finally we have her. So we haven't, uh, it's not necessarily not classic. It's just uh, maybe a more modern type of classic. Tom Ford for Gucci. One couple who's always in fashion is superstar designer Gianni Versace and his sister Donatella. On target with the mood of the moment, the Versaces infuse the pulse of today's youth into their Estanti and Versus collections. The Estanti line is dedicated to the type of woman who takes the trends in fashion and makes each look her own. Easy elegance rules. Simple lines take shape in basic elements and tactile fabrics. Dante, Versace style with a youthful edge. At Versus, the collection is peppered with irony and a definite sense of fun. But even here, Versace doesn't abandon delicacy. Yet Versace's sex appeal rules.
the Estante and Versus collections from design masters Gianni and Donatella Versace. Can London rule the fashion world again? With a new crop of young designers, many industry insiders are hopeful that London has found its focus again. They want to see the clothes, they want to see the newness, they want to see the stores. You know, there's just a feeling about London, and it happens in London. It's, it's a great thing about London. It, it'll lie dormant for a couple of seasons, and then you go whoosh, and it'll start all over again. And the leading trends in London may make you feel like you're starting all over again. Kitty colors are back. The brights of your childhood are taking over the catwalks. And the riches at the end of this rainbow? Slogan t-shirts deliver the message. Fun is back in fashion. While the club kids continue to exert their influence, from the fetish scene to mainstream, plastics are recycled for style. The trends commanding the London catwalks. One of the brightest young stars shining in London today is Nicholas Knightley. Known for his couture-like approach to fabric, 26-year-old Knightley is continually developing his technique. The first thing I want to say is that I hope it has a very modern feel. Um, and basically, I'm just carrying on working each season developing cut. It's not like a tailored jacket that is like borrowed from menswear, it's like jersey dresses and soft shirts, it's all soft and very feminine. This season's silhouette was much closer to the body, a lot of spiral cutting, very slim and very athletic, sort of um, very kind of like, classical Grecian shapes in a way. sort of hoping for and then what comes along you know it's, it's like a, you can't be too tight about your original ideas you have to let it develop it's part of this very I cut everything on the stand so things kind of they almost have a life of their, their own and they, they develop almost of their own accord with regards you know, like today's collection, I, ne I never get into that thing of showing show pieces to get press. Everything we show is for selling and meant to be worn. And maybe we exaggerate the accessories slightly, but that's only really to um, uh, help tell a message of the clothes. You know, if you actually look at the rails, the individual pieces are sort of really wearable for a number of ages and sizes. So I think that's the thing, just to make sure everything's a really real garment and it's not just about one season, it's a, you know, and it's really going to do someone a service. I think that's the thing. London is known for its fashion designers who push the envelope. On the cusp of Britain's cutting edge is designer Hussein Shalayan, whose imagination was sparked by another burgeoning industry. It was about how we um, emulate, um, you know, technology, um, you know, in relation to the structure of our bodies and how technology seems alien but it's very much to do with how we are structured and and how we function ourselves and what i did was i used a series of symbols and prints that were superimposed onto the body so it was this whole idea of how um, we're forgetting about the fact that it evolved from our being and and how it's kind of taking its own course 
but actually it shouldn't seem alien. We wanted to give the sensation of speed in the clothes and function and mix, and mix them up with tailoring and, um, you know, sort of chiffon and etc. Basically, I create my own theories, I think, and respond to things in my own way. Like, I, I create symbols, um, you know, in relation to you know, something that I might feel strongly about. Um, generally, it's to do with the philosophy of science, I think. The Collection, from London's Hussein Shalayan. Designer Betty Jackson isn't immune to the rush of catwalk life. How does she stay so centered? By inviting her followers into a world of style, elegance, and confidence. The overall look, yeah, it's sort of a mix of masculine and very soft ethnic things. There's a lot of uh, influence from Arabia and then with sort of boys jackets over and suits and it's all that sort of um, it's 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 for confident women who are not frightened anymore you know skirts lengths aren't an issue you can wear skirts or trousers you know they can be long or knee length it's it's there are choices I think Fabrics, there's damask, tablecloth, everything for days shine. There's different levels of shine though now. It's pearlized, it's taken down, it's um, there's all there's the very, very special fabrics, I think. They're very um, nothing to do with natural look at all. I think we're completely done to death. And it's just things with just a bit of specialness. I thought it was a great show. I mean, I come to all her shows, and I think this is probably one of the best. I loved it. I really loved it. But I'm a big fan of these suits and this shirt. It, it's sort of a mix of prints. It's a bit of, um, you know, you, you cut your shirt in half so that you can be whatever you want. So, so it's flowers on the front and it's Czech man's sort of tailoring on the back. Um, but again, it's exactly how you wear it, you know, you mix it up with the textures, you keep it plain. It's an accent, really, rather than a takeover of the whole garment. Colours. White, 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 white. White's very, very important, I think. And then this emergence of colour, pale blue and orange, and then it softens to, to pink later on. Um, I think everybody's ready for colour. As long as you keep the basics as being black and white throughout, mix in, uh, pull in colour on that sort of uh, level, really. But I think everybody's ready for a bit of colour. This season marks the second appearance of Betty's breakaway line, BJ Knits, which in just one season has grown incredibly. I can't stop wearing knitwear. I mean, it's just... Uh, and, and what we try and do is actually do it for, for different sort of situations, really. So it becomes sportswear, it becomes special, it becomes easy. It's taken out of that leisure situation. Those barriers are no longer there. Breaking the fashion barriers. Betty Jackson. At the core of the Big Apple lies a work ethic like that of nowhere else. The weeks before a fashion show are comprised of a grueling schedule of planning, building, and sewing. The moments before the show meld together in a frenetic mix of makeup and sound bites, but it's all in a day's work for the soldiers in the fashion trenches. Through the years, the all-star lineup at Anne Klein has included heavy hitters Donna Karen, Louis Del Olio, and Richard Tyler. But today, Patrick Robinson leads the team at the Anne Klein Collection. It's, um, it's a sportswear collection, and it's a sportswear collection in the true sense of American sportswear. There are clothes in here that you can mix and match. Um, everything sits on top of something else, um, and 
everything works with something else within that group. So there are many different colors, but um, I think black's the, the base, which is classic and Klein. I have um, jackets that are fitted through the waist with slim pants. I have jackets that are a little bit more blousey and easier um, with a fuller pant. Um, we, lots of dresses, lots of dresses as silhouettes, but very clean, very straight. All the skirts are straight. Um, there are a few dresses that have softer, fuller skirts, so there's many different silhouettes. We asked this 28-year-old designer how he prepared for his first time at bat for Anne Klein. I spent the first week trying, going through their old archives, going through their old clothes, um, but almost all the way back to Anne Klein herself. That's what I was really looking at. And I just found it amazing. And then I had to just leave that and move forward. And but I, I think the one thing I brought forward was the sportswear, the sense of the sportswear, the sense of the color black being the base and all the other colors sitting on top, the idea of mix and match, which was one of her favorite terms. So it's been, it's been a development. It's been a little bit mind game for me. It's been a, a way of looking at everything differently from where I was in the past. I think that you, I don't see how you could live in this world and not be inspired with uh, communication being the way it is, computers, um, technology. I'm crazy about all that. And I just, it just excites me. So that's why I'm inspired from. When I did fabrics, I was a little bit inspired by um, English tweets and also by really using all the more modern, the most modern uh, fabrics I could find. And those, um, the double faces, the uh, double face silks. Um, it's hard to think of them all at the top of my head. But just, um, I was just pushing myself in fabric, um, trying to use the highest technology I could in fabric. Every one of the designers at the helm have always been a great designer. Um, I hope I can live up to that. <laughs> a big hit at Anne Klein, Patrick Robinson. This leading lady of 7th Avenue doesn't have to rely on props. Nicole Miller brings many different inspirations together, sure to inspire women to redecorate their wardrobes. My collection is very decorated this year. There's a lot of embroidery, there's a lot of colors, a lot of print. Everybody's talking about conservative chic. I don't see that being the direction at all. I mean, People are loving decoration. People are, have too many black jackets in their closet. They have too many plain things, and people want is, interesting things. And I think my collection is all about interest and about things that you love and you're going to have to buy because you don't have it in your closet, and it's something new and it's something different. I started out, you know, looking at oriental things, and I took a lot of elements out of oriental prints, such oriental uh, brocades, you know, such as this is where we got the peacock from, and, you know, the birds. I went to El Paso, Texas, and ended up making the Chinese cowboy boots, and I came back through snowboarding country, so I've got this sort of eclectic mix of all these different things going on in the collection, and it worked out to be really fun, and, you know, we've got the cowboy boots with the snowboarding dresses, and then we've got, like, you know, the you know, western pockets on a Chinese dress, and everything is sort of mixed up every which way. It's very exciting. It's also, um, you know, this was like always a dream of mine, and I didn't start having fashion shows till I was 39. So I was sort of, in a way, I've been around a long time, but I sort of got another chance to sort of recreate and reinvent myself. And I think it's always about reinventing yourself. The nights prior to fashion shows, Miller admits that she can't sleep. She retools and refines right up until showtime. We have the models getting made up and the hair getting done and, you know, double checking everything. And I have to double check the clothing. <laughs> 
I get nervous when the music starts playing, and I'm always, I'm very nervous like five weeks ahead of time, and I don't sleep for like five weeks. But it's like, when it gets to today, it's like, I, I feel like I've done everything I could, and anything, there's nothing I can change, or there's nothing I can, you know, everything, if anything goes wrong, it's out of my control. And all I can really do now is double check the clothes. Always a hit on 7th Avenue, Nicole Miller. It seems all of New York is tickled pink. From bubblegum shades to a champagne tint, American fashion is in the pink this spring. I love pink. It's like the whole fun of being a girl. I think that pink is a state of mind more than it is a color, for sure. I just think that it's, um, it reflects how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the world, basically. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very positive thing. It's a very optimistic thing, I think. In any form, as a dress, as a couch, any, any way at all. As hair, some people have pink hair. So think pink this spring. But the excitement doesn't stop there. In one of the season's best collections, Anna Sui mixes retro, rock, and S&M for a rollicking good time. I think it was very fun, you know, a lot of prints. Uh, I think I went print crazy this season, um, but it was the mood was really set by the Barad prints. Um, I wanted some figurative type prints that haven't been around for a long time, and I just, uh, like, fortune fell upon me, and there they were. So is Anna jumping on the retro bandwagon? Actually, she's led the retro pack by bringing vintage looks out of the closet and onto her cutting-edge runway. I think it's difficult to kind of make that blend, but I've, I've been trying very hard. I like elements of old, but I like high-tech fabrics, I like high-tech colors, so I try to combine the two. An Anna Sui show without creative styling. Anna's witty accessories are always a highlight of the New York collections. Accessories are always really important to me, and I always think in terms of a total look. Um, I, I wear a lot of accessories. I love accessories. I collect handbags, I collect jewelry, I collect shoes. So, I mean, it's just a natural thing for me to also incorporate that into whatever look it is that I'm trying to project. Anna always projects her love of fashion into every collection. She's come a long way from designing clothes for her Barbie dolls as a child in Detroit. really happening to me, you know, it's, it's really my dream. Fashion that's a dream, from Anna Sui. This season, the odds were high that Cynthia Rowley's collection would hit the jackpot. Cynthia took the chance on Vegas, and she's now on a roll. Rowley stacked the fashion deck with both ultra-feminine and slinky, sexy designs. The inspiration for my spring show was, or is, really American glamour, and it's 
good girls and bad girls. So we start off with the good girls and what everybody would think would be glamour. Sort of the stereotypical little pink dress, um, little gloves, high heels, just what you would think a nice girl, the kind of girl you'd bring home to mom. And then end with sort of the bad girls that are also glamorous, but in their own sexy little way. The snake skin is from the bad girls, and it's meant to look like it's wet and sort of still slithering, maybe. Cynthia's bad girls were influenced by the bad boys of Las Vegas. That whole group was sort of in inspired by Vegas, and some of the inspiration came not just from glamorous women, but some of the glamorous men like Dino and um, uh, Evil Knievel and all Elvis and all different people. My inspiration always comes from historical things, and I have a real, a personal feeling for sort of the 50s, and um, so I think I always have a little bit of that flavor. My clothes are not really expensive, um, and so I end up using everything. We create a lot of fabrics. We created a lot of the prints or embellishments, a lot of emphasis on the waist and tiny little belts and, and tiny waist, fitted skirts, and um, great jackets that make you look very shapely. I think that lengths are everything. You know, it's whatever you look best in. Somebody called them happy clothes ones, and I think that people have a lot of fun when they wear them. I do. Thank you.